Cook, Sandy Cruz. Welcome. Well, thank you very much, um, everybody. Um, I was thinking before I entered uh, this room, maybe you all know when you're coming home, when you're a child at home, Mom, what are you going to eat tonight? Do you recognize that? Every time you're smelling maybe already some cookies or some other things in the kitchen. But now you grow up already, and I think you have to do your own cooking, do you? Right? Where does cooking start? In the supermarket, I thought so. This is our supermarket nowadays. So when I, I'm a chef of course, when I start cooking, if I start thinking about cooking, of course, that's what I'm doing the whole day, even at night, I mean, think about the food, what are we eating tomorrow? That's with my job, of course. But now again, we have to buy our own groceries. And when, especially our students in, the, in our kitchen, they come to me and chef, when this new menu is coming? I said, the new menu? Yeah, of course, you have to change the menu. It can be in a restaurant and can be at home. So who decides what we're eating? The supermarket. the supermarket, right? How do you know what we eat? We need labels to make sure that our food is, well, we heard something about sustainable, something like health food. We see different kind of labels give you some guarantee, so like the fair trade labels, or eco, or the meter, all kind of labels we can trust, but do we? And I always say, food start, of course, not in the supermarket, but in the nature. The nature decides what we are eating, so if students or people are coming up, when is the new menu ready, look, outside, because the nature decides when the first asparagus are coming, the green peas, beautiful vegetables from our own country, Holland. No, no, the industry thinks differently because, hey, peeling potatoes for mashed potato. Why? We can, we can buy it. We can buy mashed potato, just mashed potato made from, of course, potatoes, maybe a little milk, cream, well, maybe a little bit of butter and salt, that's all. The industry makes also potato puree, mashed potato. But see how much e numbers we need now in our food for to get this mashed potato wonderful. Where do you think is the problem? My problem is, hey, I can't beat them anymore. I'm a chef, I've been cooking my whole life, and now everybody's eating from the supermarket. And what is the problem? They come to me in my restaurant, cooking the whole day with our students, and they think it's not really the same. Your food is different. Yes, of course my food is different. But why is my food different? Because I don't add any e numbers in there. I don't need extra sugars in my food. And there my problem start already. Then we, we started, of course, in a long time ago in Stendon, to think about food, of course, in our education. But also, we started in the canteen with real food. Do we know? What is real food? And there, my problem starts again. Working for Stendon, I will say, I want to change. I want to give you an honest product without the industry. So we have to make ourselves the food, and we have to buy our food in the nature. And there started. But then to explain what is real food, what is healthy food, etc., etc., is more difficult. Because what is healthy? What do, what do you need as a person each day in, in, in your food, in your, in, your, um, in your dinner? And therefore, I started up a way of thinking, and I presented this book uh, three years ago. I was thinking, how can I explain you on an easy way to do your groceries in a kind of supermarket and find your own way? Because I think the, uh, the industry, the food industry, makes us cooking. And I want to change it. And therefore, I brought up a system about s in principles, what I matched in what I called the Dutch cuisine. Why Dutch? Because I'm Dutch. And I started to cook in a French kitchen in Holland. I started to learn French recipes instead of Dutch. And therefore, I said, hey, I was born in Holland. 
I'm cooking in Holland, I learned cooking in Holland, and I have to do it on the French way. So I change it, and I think about what can I do to start a movement, and I did. What is uh, keeping Holland together, food in Holland together? And that I'm not saying we need to eat Dutch food every day, but that you can be inspired by your own culture. And therefore I say, well, I'm a Dutch chef, I cook Dutch. But it's more difficult because nowadays we eat in the restaurants, we're eating more French, we're eating Spanish, we're eating even, well, American style of uh, burgers or something like that. And I think, well, every time when I see on my plate, I want to see where am I and what is the season. And therefore I started the Dutch cuisine with five principles. The story of Dutch cuisine is easily explained because I can, I think you can remember five words, just five words. When you start doing your groceries or planning your menu, you only have to learn five words, five principles, and then you're, you're, sure, then you're certain if you go in the supermarket and find your fresh ingredients, you have a good dish. Okay, those are the five principles from the Dutch cuisine, and that is going to be based on uh, food at Stenden. So I can explain you the, the first and, the, and of course later on the, the rest of the, uh, the principles. But first the culture, I think it's interesting because of course, how many Dutch people we have around here? Okay. Okay, so we have a lot of Dutch um, guests over here, but also for the not Dutch guests, we also can have a, a look to our culture. Because if I think Holland, most of the time they think, wow, wonderful. But a lot of chefs, a lot of Dutch people are not really proud on the food anymore. And I will say, why do I need to have my ingredients from out the Caribbean for the pineapples or the green beans from Kenya or for Egypt? Because I have beautiful fruit, I have beautiful vegetables. So why I still try to get it out of a different country? So I think my food should be started in our own culture. And of course, I'm Dutch, so I'm doing it in Holland. But if you're from Germany, or you're even from Indonesia, of course, you have a look in your own culture. Look in your own garden, look in your own nature, and that's, I think, food started. Right, so we have beautiful ingredients in Holland, but we first need to learn what is the season. And that is typical Dutch, I think. We have a wonderful country with at least four different seasons in food, in vegetables. So we, sh we, we should take care of those, those, um, those seasons. But of course, the supermarket, I'm not gonna give you some names, but of course, Albert Heijn is the most famous in Holland. They were, uh, we thought, of, I thought we have a wonderful thing. We have four, at least four different seasons in vegetables, for example. Or do have a look at Albert Heijn. They changed it to just one season. Because the whole year we have tomatoes, we have lettuce, we have, well, all kind of summer vegetables, also the winter vegetables. So how is it just impossible to understand the season? You go to the Albert Heijn, you see uh, five, six, seven varieties in tomatoes, five, six times varieties in lettuce. So how can we see what is the season? So I will think, try to respect our own um, seasons, recognize the season, because I think in summertime, like today, we have beautiful weather. Well, I think eating, uh, well, how do you call it? Uh, uh, curly kale, red cabbage. When it's beautiful outside, it's hot, it's almost 25 degrees now. I can tell you because I just came from outside. Yes, now I want to try to have fine vegetables like tomatoes, a little bit olive oil. But when it's winter time and it's freezing, I think it's wonderful to have this curly kale, that boulacol, wonderful, and red cabbage. And therefore I think, without having all those supermarkets, I think it's wonderful to see on your plate what is the season, so now we should have nice young spring vegetable. That is, I think, the most important thing from our culture, our Dutch culture. But of course, we're famous about, do you recognize this? The wall of fame, with, oh no, just the, the croquette. This is something Dutch as well. But I will say, be proud of it, but make sure you make your own croquette. With buying from the industry, loaded with sugars, MSG, etc. that's not natural. But this can be wonderful. So I think we can be proud on Holland. So that was culture, number one. Number two, well, we heard in the previous uh, presentation something about sustainability. If I talk about cooking, and of course, well, more the women than the men like to eat health food. 
it's typical, I don't know why men would want to, they would want to eat healthy food, but most of the times the women started with healthy food. But if I talk about healthy food, that is not what I mean with sustainability. If I talk about sustainable food, that means not healthy for you as a human, but healthy for the earth. And I think that is real more important to think about than having only having your own weight or your own healthy. So I think talking about healthy food means also healthy for the earth. And that I started to change the average amount of meat on the plate, because in Holland the, the average amount of meat is 235 grams for a person a day. They eat or fish or meat. And if you go look into a restaurant, if you go to a restaurant, most of the times you have the starters, main courses and desserts. Most of the time, it's always basic on uh, or um, uh, meat or vegetable of um, uh, fish. So carpaccio, for example, or shrimp cocktail, for example. It's typical restaurant food. And if you're lucky, you have some lettuce with it. For the main course, most of the time you have, well, steak, veal steak with pepper sauce, or you have a salmon or other kind of fish with a small garniture from some vegetables because we need some to eat some vegetable. And so you can see the the percentages are more 80% meat and fish, and just the garnish is most of the time just 20%. And now we change that, I think it's more important to focus on the beautiful thing like vegetables, and therefore with principle number two, the healthy kitchen means 80% vegetables, and just the garniture should be more the fish and the meat. And that is gonna be really more healthy because then we're gonna keep the earth healthier in the future. So I think now for the modern menus, we start first with the vegetables and we search for, uh, sorry, for the, the, the animals, uh, the, the fish and the meat as a garniture, 20%. And you will see in principle number five, it will come back. Okay, see, so we have more vegetables and less pieces of meat. So that is principle number two. So we have in a vegetable uh, menu, vegetable restaurant, that doesn't mean vegetarian. Because some vegetarian think they're eating, they're, e they're doing it better because it's more sustainable to eating, to not eating fish or meat. But if you are a vegetarian, you're probably eating cheese or drinking milk. And that is more or less the same as eating a lot of meat because that's not sustainable as well. Okay? So that was principle number two, health. Then we start with, and that is, I think, the most important one, is eating naturally. And that's more difficult. We saw the supermarkets coming by. How difficult it is for you to buy something, what the industry make, they call food, without those chemical enemas, like yeast. And those combinations, especially those, uh, co the combination of sugar, fat, and uh, the, the MSG, makes you eating more. We in the restaurant, we are having the first snack when you're coming in the restaurant, we have the chips, paprika chips. And of course, we're making ourselves because it's quite simple. Yeah, you make peeled potatoes, slice it in thin slices, deep fry it, and finish it with a dust of salt and paprika powder, right? Have a look to this famous brand, Lay's. Probably some of you know Lay's. They never have small bags of chips. They always have XXL. Because when I make a small bowl with paprika chips, it's nice with your drinks, but you don't finish the whole bowl because it's quite heavy, just a little bit fat. So you finish quite early. But then, maybe you recognize yourself sitting on the couch, you never have a small bowl of pom chips from Lay's, never. Do you recognize that? You always have the big bags with a nice touch of Coca-Cola, you're sitting watching television, and you eat it. You eat, eat the whole bag in your own, this XXL. And that's because of the combination of sugar, fat, and MSG. That it gives you more appetite and you will finish the bag, right? And that is what we, what's in our food. So if you make your own food properly without those enemas, you're eating not that much anymore. You eat pure, natural, and honest. And I think that is for the future important. And therefore, always have a look on the back label of the, for example, bread. How many enemas are in bread? If I make bread, it's quite, quite simple. You have some flour, sometimes yeast, sometimes a little bit of touch of salt, some milk and water, five ingredients in bread. Maybe some of you uh, are not making your bread daily. Maybe you're buying in the supermarket or a bakery. Just have a look on the back label. Think about five ingredients to make bread. Do I use sugar in my bread? 
No. Sometimes you see bread with five extra sugars. So it's so crazy that we think we eat healthy, we eat natural, but that's not true. We're eating a lot of chemical products with it. So therefore, look always on the back label when you buy something or you might make it yourself. So that was principle number three. Then we go principle number th uh, four, and that is quality. And quality seems, well, quite simple, but I think we need to respect those guys, the farmers who make our products. Nowadays, I think the supermarkets are earning the most of the money than the, the, the farmers are making those materials. And I think those farmers, we should respect them. Because nowadays, I heard some farmers, they're earning not enough money to, to, uh, to, um, to organize the, the, the company. They need to, to pay more because Albert Heijn says, this is the price and otherwise we don't buy at all. And I think we should be able, I think especially in Holland or in Europe, to pay a little bit more for the farmers. So we have to, well, I think we have to more, uh, put more pressure on Albert Heijn instead of the farmers. We need to respect those guys because they are doing the, well, the wonderful jobs where we need it every day. Okay, then we go to the last principle, principle number five, and for the most of you, hey, what's in there for me? Uh, or um, is it more expensive? Because having beautiful vegetables, organic from our own country, with just a little bit meat and fish, I will say this kind of kitchen is cheaper than a, a, um, a modern kind of menu with a lot of meat and just a little bit of vegetables. So I think we can earn all about this much more. So the company, like a restaurant, can save more money, have a better profit. The food can be more cheap because yes, you have wonderful vegetables, even organic, you have the best quality in meat and fish. And because it's 80 to 20%, you have less meat, less uh, fish on your plate, but the quality can be much better because instead of 200 grams of steak, just 80 or 75 grams, so you can spend much better quality of much more money for the best quality you can find. So building up those five prin uh, principles from the Dutch cuisine, I will say is better for us all. So you can see you have your own food, better for the farmers, it's better in quality, in flavors, it's more healthy by eating more vegetables. You're saving the earth by not using too much water, electricity to produce your food. And finally, and for me, of course, that's the most important one, it's all about taste. It flavors of those beautiful products gives you better product and a better kitchen. So if, um, if i looking to what I use for the cow, I told you in after principle number one, yes, if you are not a vegetarian and you eat sometimes meat, don't stay only with the chopped or the beefsteak or the hamburger. If you want to eat uh, animals, you should you uh, should eat everything, like the ears, the pig, uh, the stomach from the cows, or even the balls of the cow is really wonderful to eat. And if I look to the fish, it really is true. <laughs> the brains can be eaten as well, wonderful. And nowadays I've been talking with a fisherman, and he was complaining because there was not enough uh, fish in the sea anymore. There only are jellyfishes. I say, then we start with jellyfish. So next week we have the first jellyfish in our kitchen. We start cooking jellyfish. Because I'm not the one who decides what to eat. I told you before, the nature decides what we eat. So now we have jellyfish instead of smoked salmon. <laughs> it's wonderful, I can promise you. <laughs> so this is what I call Dutch cuisine. You can see it's 80% vegetables with its garniture, meat and fish. Then we have a lot of products from, from our own country, from Holland with just a little bit extra from abroad. 100% of flavor, taste, 100% um, extra, well, flavors in your dish, the new ingredients and new techniques. And I think that brings everything together in a new kind of kitchen. And I hope tonight or tomorrow, or maybe in the weekend, when you're doing your groceries, you think about the five principles. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not telling you, you should be more healthy. Only thing what I think is important Think and know what you eat, and then you will see what is real food. Thank you very much. <laughs>